like an honest scientist. See very clearly that this moment is as good as it gets. Because all that exists is now. So this moment is as good as it gets. There is nothing in this moment that can prevent sense of true happiness and fulfillment. Check this. Is it clearly seen? There's no one other experience There is no better state of mind. There is no better condition of the body. Or circumstances. that can create more happiness. See this very clearly. Only then, there is this very, very subtle desire to replace this experience with a better experience in the next moment. which means resistance to what is subtly, which means a very subtle 
constant suffering. Unknowingly, unconsciously, dictates our relationship with our mind and others' minds. So from the point of view of the ever-present peace. Which means the one who's in the womb of the Supreme Mother, Supreme Parent. Can truly see This is as good as it can get. This is in Baba's language called burning of all sins. There is no desire to replace this experience with the next one. Because there is no next. There is no previous. Now is all there is. This is as good as it gets. This is the timeless womb. of the Supreme Parent, nothing to want or desire as a better experience. They could be complete dis-ease at the level of sensations. 
there could be. Complete dis-ease. In the state of mind or vice versa. Or fluctuation between the two. The being is in a very good way numb to it all. It is like the anesthetic effect of the love of the parent. It's not some dry, feelingless state of mind. But unconscious acceptance not consciously accepting, but unconscious. Acceptance of whatever the current experience may be. Loving indifference. Benevolent indifference. And this is called, in Baba's language, an angel that doesn't touch the ground. Not because it's above these feelings, 
in an arrogant way. I'm above it. No. But complete pure knowing. that they are made out of me, they are known by me. They seem to exist as an object within me. And they just need my loving presence. They need love. Unconditional love. Of Baba and I. And that is the healing of the mind and the body. By the one who is beyond healing. Silence. You read it early today. Although we wanted to highlight some points from recent Sakar Murlis, I only have them highlighted in Hindi. Where Baba said that full knowledge samaj chayenge to jaise ki baap ko knowledge se khali kar denge phir wah shant ho jayenge ऐसे नहीं उनके अंदर ज्ञान टपकता होगा सब कुछ दे दिया फिर उनका पार्ट रहा साइलेंस का जैसे तुम साइलेंस में रहेंगे तो ज्ञान थोड़े ही टपकेगा वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बिकॉज बाबा हैज बिन टेलिंग अस दे कम्स अ टाइम व्हेन देयर इज नथिंग टू टेक फ्रॉम बाबा एंड नथिंग टू receive or nothing to give, right? And uh, and that is what we've been calling that uh, knowing as what Baba called the other day, sun, right? Where the being is absolutely, and we've seen this Murli uh, also. Um, the date is, wait a minute. Does anybody, um, I don't know if Sister Yamini knows the date. 
Okay. The ultimate objective of making effort is to be an avyakt angel. Yeah? Now you really need to be in Baba's womb to understand this, Murli. Okay? <laughs> and feel free to interact and ask questions here. Okay? At present, it is the time for you souls to see the ultimate effort to reach the final stage. All the Maharati children who are instruments should also be the instrument examples in their speed of effort. What is the most elevated effort, Purushat? Whom will you follow in this? For example, in the Sakar form, you saw how effort should be made and what is called effort and what is called Purushat. Earlier, everyone moved forward on the basis of seeing Brahma Baba, who was the symbol of Purushat. But who's the symbol in the physical form at this time? Do you know what the ultimate Purushat is? In the beginning, you made Purushat to finish Dehi Abhiman with the awareness of being four-armed image. And through this, you were able to remove the consciousness of being a woman, as well as any weaknesses or cowardice, and you thereby became fearless and powerful. So in the beginning, you made practical Purushat to finish the consciousness of being, I mean, a gender, I'm adding, by having the awareness of being Chaturbhuj, right? I'll just concise it. And what Baba is telling us here is that that Chaturbhuj, that example of Vishnu and Lakshmi, right? Is that right? Yeah. And that example, Baba used to take it as complete balance in the male and the female qualities in every soul. Yeah. So soul has these qualities for the play, for the part. There has to be a complete balance in the male and the female qualities. Only then there's a perfect man, a perfect part, a perfect human. Yeah? And so this kind of helps us see beyond the gender consciousness. Yeah? Neither a man nor a woman. Just a being with a perfect balance. Right? A perfect balance of love and power. Yeah, and that is what Baba is saying that first he's telling us a little bit background of how these souls behind uh, Dadi parts, they were kind of made to see their genderlessness, bodylessness, because the biggest grip is I'm a man, you're a woman. Yeah, and that is more of being that body and the body. Yeah, and that was kind of lit literally dismantled in these souls very early on. Yeah? By Baba. So what is the ultimate objective of making Purushat? It is to be that Avyakt angel. Yeah? What is the Avyakt form? To be angelic. In this also, you should have your form of light in front of you as your objective. <laughs> now, when you hear it, what happens when you hear this language? <laughs> Do you suddenly see an angelic body of light <laughs> in your mind? 
Hmm? Is that what happens? <laughs> Nothing wrong. I mean, <laughs> that's how the mind works. What is the meaning behind it? Yeah. What is the meaning behind it? When Baba is saying that to be angelic means you should have your form, the formless soul, have the form of light in front of you as your objective. We'll read a little bit more. By keeping that in front of you, the feeling will be that this is your form in an aura of light. You see, your avyakt form is the subtle region. Okay? Your avyakt form is the subtle region. It's not like you go to subtle region and you're going there in your avyakt form somewhere. Your avyakt form is the subtle region. So what difference do you see between the avyakt We'll go in the detail and understanding of it, yeah? So what difference do you see between the avyat and the vyakt? Between sakar and akar? The akari form is an aura, I mean the sakari form, sorry, is an aura of the five elements and the avyat form is an aura of light. I've taken a very peculiar murli, okay? <laughs> Just so that we can understand what Baba says. Hmm? Somebody actually sent it to me and they really wanted to understand it. So that is why we've taken it. The Vyakta form, that is the Sakari form, is an aura of the five elements. So what is the nature of this five elements? And the Avyakta form is an aura of light. What is the nature of light? Okay, the inherent nature. You do have the form of light. But all around you, there should also be nothing but light. As though this form is visible in an aura of light. So it's as though around your physical form, it feels like there's an aura of light. It should be just as when you look at the sun, all around you, you see light from the rays of the sun. And in the middle, you see the form of the sun itself. There is the light of the sun, but all around the light of the sun is also spread everywhere and visible in the form of an aura. It is as though you see a special light amidst the light. In this way, although you have the aim as a soul of being the form of light in the avyakt form, you are also in an aura of light. You should be able to have the awareness of your form being surrounded with light and it should also be visible everywhere. So when you look in a mirror, you are able to experience seeing your form clearly. In the same way, this form of yours should be clearly seen and experienced in the mirror of knowledge. Okay, underline. In the mirror of knowledge. Whilst you are walking and moving around and talking to others, others should experience you as a form of light, that you are an angel walking around, that you an angel are talking to someone. Only then will you be able to influence others with your awareness and stage. Now, when you hear this kind of murli, if I'm not really <laughs> awakened to my truth, hmm? knowing that I am a formless being, 
and I have the ability to assume various forms. Hmm? I am a formless being. Ability to assume various forms. Do you see it clearly first? Okay. So, what is the agency through which we, the souls, assume various forms? The formless one assumes various forms. What is the agency through which we assume various forms? Mind, okay, thought, and mind and body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Feelings. Sorry? Feelings, Feelings. conditioning of the mind, Feelings. old belief systems. Old beliefs, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Feelings. Yeah, very important, the feeling part. Yeah. So we assume I the formless being. Now Baba is telling me that know your form of light. I am formless, but now he's giving me an aura of this, what he's, for the mind, it is like it will see itself as a star and it will see itself as with an aura of light around it or it will see itself as an angelic body and it will see itself in that aura of light around it. That is what will happen for the mind. Okay? Now let that happen. Let mind do its own artistic work of painting its own images. That is its duty and job. But what Baba really is meaning is that although you have a physical form, right? Which means although you know the old sanskars, which we said in meditation, being that angelic being means that you know all the old sanskars which are constantly present. These deep-seated feelings, you know? Sometimes we can rationally see things in our mind and we can use knowledge and we see and understand things. But the root of it takes place in the body. Yeah. And these deep-seated feelings of separation are there in our body more than in our mind. Because it's one and the same thing. But in general, I'm saying it feels more solid and uh, dense because of the feelings rooted in the body. Very few souls really take the initiative to even go to the fact that actually these sensations can reside in the body very deeply and want to explore it, yeah? And uh, when Baba is saying that, it is like you know that there are five elements. Five elements means, I would probably look at five elements as just space, yeah? Just to make it simpler, yeah? Not earth, air, fire, water, all of that you don't need to look at. You just need to look at the most important element, which is 99.9%, .9%, that is space, okay? Now, it's like, if I understand very clearly that I am not something which is made out of five elements, which is space. If you don't see that very clearly, then what will happen is, on top of this, you'll try to wear another body of light. Yeah? On top of these sanskars, you'll try to put an aura of light around it and walk around in the in the world as though there's an aura of light around this body. Right? Does it help? No, it doesn't. Yeah? It just suppresses feelings even further down. Yeah? It's like trying to know myself, which is beyond time and space, which is beyond five elements and also time, trying to know myself with the mind, which is time-bound, and space bound. It's like trying to see white snow with red glasses. Yeah? You can't do that. So when Baba is saying, I'll give you with an example so that it will make more sense. What it really means to live as that, which Baba is saying is, um, you know, by keeping in front of you, the feeling will be that it's your form of an aura of light. Your form of light in front of you as your objective. Yeah, what it means is like, for example, um, 
somebody shared this uh, feeling with her and I myself have it has experienced this in the past yeah and um, and the experience was it's not it's like somebody is let's say feeling and this somebody asked me this question also just the other day and it's like they're feeling very jealous of you yeah and uh, and and there is this subtle feeling of discomfort in your heart in your body in your limbs and everywhere you're feeling that sense of deep discomfort yeah and uh, to be in that aura of light means to be in baba's womb yeah and to be in baba's womb means i really know that and that's what we call the state of sun and i can't stand just can't seem to give up that word. I know, but I just love it. And it really is very powerful for me. Okay. So please bear with me and be patient. <laughs> so it's like, I really seem to feel that when I am experiencing and knowing my truth in that airtight, airtight truth that is Baba's womb for me, where no feeling, no sensation of the body, no discomfort of the body sensations, they're not seen as bad or rejected or something that I'm above it. That's another thing. I'm not above these feelings. I know that these feelings are within me in Baba's womb, but I'm totally numb to them. Numb and not in a bad way, spiritual numbness, which is the total acceptance of them. Yeah, that that spiritual numbness is there. And I can see these feelings, let's say, in, in the past, it happened, right? So these feelings are there, and you're seeing that they're the, that the other person's attitude is a lot of uh, They are doing things to, because out of whatever their jealousy may be, they're doing things to prove themselves. And you know how it is they're trying to undermine what you're doing or kind of just doing things to prove themselves to be better or right or whatever it may be. But in Baba's womb, as an angel, you can see that they are actually and only in that space of sun, in that space of true numbness, spiritual numbness, you really have the ability to see. Because your own body is creating a lot of discomfort feelings, a lot of dis-ease in your own. In my case, it was in my heart. Yeah? Heart space of the body. In body language, it was in the heart. And I could feel that feelings of... Uh, There's no thought there. They're just latent feelings. Now, to explain to you, I'm giving words to those feelings, yeah? But there was this, the words that I'm giving to it is that there was a sense of, but you don't need to do that. Why are you doing it? And I could see that there's a sense of feeling in my own heart, in the body's heart, that sense of feeling that as though they are going to take something away from me. You know? But all of that I could see from that place of just being immersed in Baba's pure feelings. So all of that is seen. But not seen but not seen. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. Yeah? And all of that was felt, but not felt. All of that was touched by me, but I was not touched by it. Yeah? And, and it was like, I, you can see and know that really in this space, you... This is your constant eternal truth. And there was no desire to like 
these feelings are bad or I don't like this experience. No, this is the exactly. And that's why meditation was all on that, right? It was like, there's no desire to replace this experience of body-mind with another experience. Hmm? No desire. And so you could truly experience, uh, yeah, five elements is just these feelings, these sanskars. This is five elements. There's nothing more to elements because elements is space. And there's nothing more to it except that space also appears within the awareness that I am. So I'm not, I'm seeing them at a distance, but I'm not seeing them at a distance. Do you see? <laughs> I'm seeing them that they are not mine or me, and yet they reside within me. I'm not made up of them, but they are made up of me. You know how on screen, on a TV screen, there are many, many images. When you run your finger along it, you just find there is no division there. Have you seen a TV screen and you run your finger along it and you don't find any division there? Something very similar. I could see these forms are appearing in me. I could see these images are appearing in me. I could see these feelings that are associated with these forms and these images appearing in me. But I know I am formless. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to understand more when you say that these five elements uh, is essentially a space because uh, in previous classes also when I heard, uh, I don't know if my mind is visualizing in like before coming to Gyan also, I've studied a lot about these five elements and how it affects. So I'm not able to understand what uh, what does it mean by space when we say, when we relate it to five elements. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, body is also made of five elements from the point of view of mind. Yeah. Mind sees things, everything in the form of five elements because mind can only understand the language of forms. Right? So these five forms that are given to the mind is earth, air, fire, water, and ether. Right? But if you remember, Baba said a few days ago, even the mouth is like Akashvani. It's it's like the sound, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that Baba had said. I can't mm -hmm. exactly like I'm paraphrasing his words. Mm -hmm. But what it means is really these five elements is nothing but space. Space means it's a three-dimensional um, concept created by the mind. Space is a concept created mm -hmm. by the mind, just like time is a concept created by the mind, right? Yeah. So when we say space is, an, uh, is a concept, it's like, you know, when we, we use our mind, we use our mind to not only house events, and not only add a timeline to it. So we first we use our mind to add a timeline to all the events. So let's say you had breakfast in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then two days ago, you had lunch with a friend. And then five years ago, you had met the same friend. So there are certain events also that you're housing in your mind. Yeah. And those events take space in your mind. And to that space is added a timeline also, right? So your mind is actually housing events mm -hmm. and the form of space. And the space is like there will be some feelings attached to it, some emotions attached to it, some length, width, and height kind of attached to it. So it's literally a space in your mind that is created for those events. Yeah, and that space we call past, Mm. So in our mind, there's another space which is we call future, which is also in our mind. Mm. But actually, there is no such thing as space. Also, it's a concept in my mind. Hmm? Wow. Mm. Yeah. So really, mm. it is time is a concept and space is a concept. Without awareness, neither can time exist, nor can space exist. They both, both exist as a concept in my mind. So if you really see body, 
body is just made up of bundle of sanskars. Hmm. Yeah. And sanskars, where do they exist? In the mind. In the mind. And where does the mind exist? <laughs> in the space. Yeah. In the soul. In the soul. Yeah. In the soul. So actually, everything is inside the soul. So my entire experience of this vibrational world of matter, which is just vibrations, by the way, in it exists in my mind, which is the limited mind that I use, the human mind. You know, we have human mind and we have angelic mind and we have a nirakari mind, right? It all exists in the human mind in the form of four dimensions, mm. which is a concept. So when I, the soul, see myself through this human mind, I see myself as this solid body. It's made of nothing other than the soul's sanskars, which are within the soul. And really, there's no such thing also as time. But it is another concept superimposed by the mind on top. So everything is like, I am Rini. And then name is added and everything and more thoughts. And then there's a concept of the past and the concept of the future. The whole thing is really a beautiful, beautiful imagery that the mind paints. Yeah. And so then I see a uh, thousand different objects also. Then I will say, oh, this is a bottle of water. Then this is a pen. So this is a perception, right? The soul is really, if I'm really seeing with Baba, how I will see is Baba is not seeing it as a bottle of water. How is mm -hmm. Baba seeing it? Baba's not seeing it as an iPad and Baba's not seeing it as a separate phone or a separate book or a separate computer or a separate Jui or a separate Rini. Baba's not seeing it as that. When I'm seeing with Baba in my angelic truth, which means I'm using Baba's mind, the angelic mind, how am I seeing? I know that my mind, 4D mind is seeing things as body and time-bound mind, right? Mm -hmm. But what is Baba seeing? Yeah, Baba is seeing space is just vibrations, which exist in a way within the soul also. So if you really see, everything starts with awareness that you are. So when Baba is seeing light and aura, because he can't see space, he can't see everything else that we see with our four-dimensional mind. Mm -hmm. What he sees is just light, light, light. That's all he can see. And not light, the physical light. The beings that are animating and creating a certain uh, world using their 4D minds and they're creating uh, um, this beautiful images of trees and mountains and cars and, and uh, homes and bodies and personalities and characters... It all it's not that we are creating a world outside, but there is a, every soul is has its own world here. So if I were to ask you right now, how many Rinis are there? <laughs> only one. Is there only one? Be sure. <laughs> Countless sister. This time Rini is soon. Earlier it used to be ever present. I mean, there are a lot of these things. Sister, you just mentioned about four dimensions. So three dimension yeah. we understand. What fourth is this fourth time. dimension? Time is the fourth dimension. Time is the fourth dimension. Okay. But answer okay. this question. We don't want to, we want to make sure we get to the answer. How many Rinis are there? Sister, countless, I'll say that. Countless? Okay. Right now we are 47 of us. How many Rinis are there? 47 Rinis. Sorry? 47 Rini. Very good. There are 47 Rini's right now here. <laughs> How? Just How are there 47 Rini's? Very intriguing. Sensations. So that sensations are same. The vibrations are same. We it's can't discriminate all the vibration. But actually perceptions, the way each one of you perceiving this body-mind Mm. is extremely different. The way Richa will perceive Rini, the way Nikhil will perceive Rini, the way Jui or Ketaki or Anshu or Shantanu or Vivek or Manju, 
the way you will perceive Rini, each one will perceive Rini differently. So there's not one Rini. There are 47 Rinis right now in this room. There are 47 Nikhils right now in this room or 47 Shantanus right now in this room. Do you see? It's a perception. So the way we see the world, 47 worlds right now, because the way you see the world is different from the way I see the world. The way our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our sensations, they're very different. The only thing that is same for all of us is our truth of who we are. Uh, and Didi, how is this connected? Like I've been, uh, as I mentioned, I was away for some time and I was listening to all the classes and uh, the sister who shared Vietnam's experience, I'm not too sure, but same things were happening. And then Shantanubai mentioned that Didi, I, ha I had the same question. So this is happening a lot. Like whatever is whatever you know there is uh, a churning continuously going on inside and when you listen to the class you are like I, I had the same thing in my mind and that is answered in the class so mm -hmm. how how are we how are these minds connected then then uh, I think you answered are connected all mm -hmm. minds are connected because behind that we souls are all connected mm -hmm. When all the souls are connected, and a very beautiful example, like this one's whole family was out for two and a half weeks, right? Baba and I were by myself and Baba, right? And when the brother soul and and came back and they said, so was it okay? Everything was fine. You were all by yourself. And I said, I actually did not even for a moment realize and I don't even know how those two and a half weeks passed. Not even a second was elapsed between two and that according to them the day it was and the day when they arrived yeah why because the knowing now is baba and i and all the beings are beyond time distance and space there is no distance no space no time between us mm. so there was never any separation so because there was never any separation, there was never even a sense of that somebody has gone somewhere and they're coming back after. It really did not even occur. And I'm not just making up to be mm -hmm. a smart pants or anything. Mm -hmm. It actually was the experience, is the experience of the soul. There is no time, no distance, no space. Who went where? Who's gone where? Nobody's going to this. Sister, this is very deep. You have to tell us when they were not seen, you know, by these physical two eyes. Uh -huh. And you were not even cooking more. And 100%, there must be some difference without them. But you are saying, you know, at the level not a of physical, physical experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Physical to experience was different. As you said, you don't have to cook a lot, <laughs> right? So, physical mm -hmm. experience, it's different. But knowing mm -hmm. who I am, and being with Baba, that's the beauty of Baba's company. You go beyond time, distance, and space. You don't realize that you are ever apart. Yeah. You just don't. Somehow it is like that feels more true. And it doesn't mean that I, I did not really have any experience of missing or lacking, really meaning it. But all I'm saying is that it's, it's just that the, the, the knowing is very, very clear that Baba and I are together and that which is my perception is just a perception of my mind, that somebody has gone somewhere. That's just a form that appears in my mind. Maybe that body appears. It did not, but if it appears, let's say the body appears in the mind and that body is with that story, it says, Oh, that body has gone somewhere. You know it has gone. The, these three bodies, they've mm -hmm. gone somewhere. But it's just a perception of my mind. When I'm seeing that with Baba, I'm seeing that, oh, this image of these bodies that has that forms that have appeared, where are they? Are they really real? Except that they appear in my mind as a perception. 
and and that the story that it creates they've gone somewhere yeah. so that means mm -hmm. a distance and space is created by my mind mm -hmm. and then they've gone for two and a half weeks then that, that another fourth dimension is added by my mind with a thought do you see it's just a world in my mind there's no such thing as outside over there. It's just a world in my mind. In that case, Didi, do the other souls also feel the same? Because what you're explaining uh, is something that I experienced when I was away too. Like my boy is eight years old. When I came back and I asked him, did you miss me? And he was like, I didn't feel that you go anywhere. I always thought you're here. So that soul in that small body does not have too many concepts imposed on him right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is where that soul could experience that. Mm -hmm. A newborn baby is similar. Mm. Yeah. A newborn baby, you ask, did you miss your mother? What? He wouldn't know. Time, distance, space. So yeah. more you with Baba, you go beyond these things. This is what being in Baba's womb is. You're talking to Baba, you're being with Baba, you're do doing things with him. I mean, if past thought is coming, you know, it's a space in the mind, which his mind has created. And it's trying to come and pretend that there is mimicking some, some appearance of some space in my mind, and then mimicking some future in my mind as a space in the future in my mind. More you start seeing these things clearly, more you begin to see that only is now. And all these forms that are appearing and disappearing are simply the imagination of your fantastical imaginary mind. So which husband, which children, what children, what husband? It is just an imagination of my mind. Yeah. Even honestly, Didi, I didn't miss him or like there were no thoughts. How would he manage his meals and stuff like that? But I was happy to see him when I came back. And that's yeah. that that was the difference I could see that I did yeah. not miss him. But there was a happiness that mind created when I saw him when I was back. Yeah. yeah. And it's like when you're with Baba, you see that you're happy regardless. Mm. That makes sense. The happiness is not more or less. The happiness is not um, something which an outside or even your perception. There's no such thing as outside world. It's just a perception, really. Yeah. I mean, if a newborn baby is taught without any language, no language is given. If you ask them, what is this glass bottle of glass? Glass bottle of made out of glass filled with water they would not know what you're talking about if they were not given the language yeah so it's really a perception that is coming from what the mind has been taught right mm -hmm. so so truly it's all about thinking and perceiving mind which is creating a world of its own that's why you said i said there are 47 rainy sitting here right now so that is why somebody praises or somebody criticizes i know it's their own perception it's not me mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> it's their own perception. Whether they like or they dislike, it's your perception. It's got nothing to do with who I am. <laughs> yeah? Is it becoming clear? From mm -hmm. this understanding, can you truly be impervious to praise and defamation? If you don't have this understanding, then gyan points will play and it will be, I'm Rini, but I, I, I'm i not, it's Baba's gyan, it's Baba who gave and it's all of this and that and all of that will go on, which is fine, nothing wrong. But truly from understanding, when it comes, you're free. Okay, they're seeing praise. I know it's because it's their way of seeing. It's their perception of how they see this body mind with their set of sanskars that they're using. Got nothing to do with this mind-body combination. And if somebody's insulting or not seeing something nice, it's their perception. It's got nothing to do with me, the being. Clear? Then from that space, I know that my feelings of love are untouched. I can love the one who's praising and one who's defaming equally. 
It's the way you perceive the world. It's got nothing to do with any of us. And which is why it's very, very important that our entire experience of the world is made of our own thinking and our own perceptions. And this is being an angel. Being with the matter, but being in the aura of light. That is what being light means beyond time and beyond space. Is that making sense, all of this? Totally. Yes. Yeah. So which is why when I was sharing this experience, now what happens is there is in between these things called old habituated feelings and patterns hiding in the spaces and the corners of the space called imaginary space like body. Now that is there which kind of attacks. <laughs> yeah? If you, if you want to use that word, yeah? But that is when you are like that sage with Baba. To be that in that sun, smriti, of who you are. It's not a smriti also. The sun satya of who you are. In that, you are untouched by, you don't see them. It's like, you know, have you ever heard this expression that uh, for sage, there are no distractions? Yeah. Why? Because their mind is stable. Is it? Is the sage's mind stable? Not necessarily. There, there could be huge Did some sages. Did some sages na leave body, uh, you know, like karmati tavastha, but there is no Baba's uh, no, 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 knowledge no. there. So we are talking about. There's a beautiful expression that there are no distractions for a sage. Why? because no or there's a beautiful expression in one of the things which I had read before it's like this gyan kind of thing yeah and it's like there is uh, no distraction for a sage because no wars have been waged on distractions mm. no war has been waged on distractions. When there's a war that is waged on distractions, then you can say that you are distracted. Yeah? So once you understand your nature, you have no resistance to all these feelings that come up. They are not distractions for you. There is no resistance to these heavy feelings in the heart, which the mind labeled heavy. And I could see these feelings of heaviness. Why are they like this? Why is it that they, you know, and it's not a thought. It's just a feeling which I'm translating in words. But these are hiding feelings and some scars, which is what the body is made up of. Sorry, I'm just getting out of charge. So there is no resistance to any feelings. They, all the residues of separation, they can come up. And they can only come up in front of the sage. The one who is in sun satya with Baba. And that is by Baba's womb, which means dying alive to all the old sun scars. When you die, to the old sun scars, you are reborn in Baba's womb. And your sun in that garb, in that womb, you are sun. That's the analogy Baba gave now that other day. Which means, and I and I'm seeing these sensations in the body, and 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 they they don't just go away. But I have no problem if, of their reoccurrence either. They can reoccur whenever they want. Because I'm not waging any war on them. Does that make sense? 
So that is really being light. I'm the one illuminating all the experiences, right? They are cut off from the... No, we are not talking about that. We are talking about um, somebody wrote because they are cut out from the normal life. No, no, no. We are talking about sage as a word. Again, see how we perceive words differently. <laughs> hmm? When we are talking about the sage, it is that sagely quality of the soul. Hmm? We are not talking about a person playing the role of a sage there. Yeah, we are talking about the sagely quality of the soul. Yeah. So am I, because who wages war? Who wages war on distractions and feelings and emotions and discomfort? And, and how do we run away from it? First of all, who is waging war and how do we run away from it? Who's waging war? Person mind. Person mind or? When you believe they have some power over you. Hmm. That is when you wage war. Isn't it? Some insecurity. When you're feeling there's some insecurity or it's trying to threaten something. That, I mean, more than insecurity and threaten, it's like there's a sense of as though they are more powerful than I am. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's where there's a desire to discipline them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and all of this is showing that somewhere you're believing that has you, the soul, is not in Baba's womb, but somewhere you've stepped as uh, you have... Oh. It's like you have believed some particular thought. You believe some particular thought to have more power over you. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, which is why uh, Baba is telling us, ki, how do we escape from these distractions? Through a thought about something else. And this very subtle tendency one has seen here then whenever there's some discomfort in the sensations, I see with Baba, and, and only from that sun satya, I can see from Baba, with Baba, how mind very craftily creates another thought about something else totally, not even jnan, because it is understood, because the soul knows jnan can be used to run away from these uncomfortable feelings. But it will think about some family member. If it is about some Brahmin family member, then it will start thinking about some family member and feel a little bit better. <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> That's how it distracts itself <laughs> from this feeling. If a Brahmin soul's part has been instrumental in making this part feeling, uh, body feeling uncomfortable here, then the mind will slowly take a thought about some family member. Achha, you know about this, okay, I have to go there and here, whatever. <laughs> and you can really see how it's trying to run away from the discomfort of this body-mind. And all of this you can see only with Baba from a place of sun. And, and when you see that dead silence, from that dead silence, even a drop of a needle is heard. Only in that dead silence. But if you don't know your dead silence truth, the needles could be falling all over the place and you will not know. <laughs> yeah? So really know that you the being and totally bodyless. This is being bodyless. That no sensation of the body doesn't matter how uncomfortable and for how long and what story attached to it cannot be your truth. But it is what you are touching, but it is not touching you. Who 
why that loving indifference is necessary not indifference alone but loving indifference why mm -hmm. why loving indifference who will tell Mm -hmm. Nobody? No comments? <laughs> because it requires a lot of wisdom, courage to have that loving indifference. Yeah? A lot of courage. And this courage is very loving courage. Knowing that these are feelings which are coming up from within the being that I am, being expressed in the physical, not physical, expressed in the, in the body made of sanskars. You have the recognition of it and you know that you have total knowing that although they are made out of you, but you are not made out of them then there is not that disdain towards them there is not that feeling of uh, being above them or wanting to express them or reject them this requires real wisdom real wisdom yeah and this is all being a vyakt form in the subtle region. Does that make sense? Being a vyakt form means you know your untouched angelic truth in the face of these very subtle feelings and sensations of the bundle of sanskars. They are there, but you're unfazed by it. You're absolutely loving presence to it. And this is what when Baba has said in one of the Murli's body as a stage. On which these sanskars play. It's literally like these, these thoughts have their roots in the body. Yeah. That is why more you start seeing it like that, you will experience and, and knowingly experience you will that more body feels just bundle of sanskars and sensations. More it is feeling less dense and more transparent. And that is what Baba is calling that around the sun, there is an aura of light also, light within the light. So even your body starts feeling light and transparent, not feeling of the body mind, but knowingly, you know that this body is not the denseness that my mind makes it to be. Yeah? So this understanding of this murli has to be very clear. Otherwise, mind takes it on a completely different trip altogether. Anybody has anything to say at this point? So that's why Baba is saying, well, and I remember that one would be working through this body with Baba and I would still have these feelings sitting in the heart so powerfully. Strongly, I would use the word, but they had no power. They were strong, but they were powerless. Yeah, strongly felt but powerlessly. 
Hmm? And it's not like these feelings are gone. Yeah, everyone perceives gyan also differently, absolutely. And it's not like feelings are gone. At times they still resurface, but you are that sage who's not waging any war. You're not resistance, you're not resistant to the resurfacing of these, because our idea is not here to become a perfect body mind. Not at all. Do you think it's our ideas to be a perfect body mind? <laughs> Who wants to become a perfect person here? Nobody? Very good. <laughs> Very good. This is not the idea also to be a perfect body mind. It is to really know your happiness and let it express in its own unique way. It will be different for each one how it expresses. Yeah. Biggest mehnat ends here, Didi. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're really doing a lot of mehnat, it will show on your face also. See, the face is the index of the mind. There's too much mehnat going on. <laughs> then it will really start to be visible. It's like, bohat mehnat kar rahe, bhai thak gai ho, thoda rest kar lo. Huh? And uh, the whole thing of this now with Baba, there is no future in Confluence Age. There is no past in Confluence Age. You're with Baba now and you are knowing your uh, unchanging truth now. So then where is aim and objective and Baba is using the word? What is the aim and objective? For Iqbal, aim and objective is to get to this perfect form, right? And there will be mehnat here. For the being, being is enlightened, but it knows that my mind and body will take its own time to realign with my truth. I'm not at all distracted by my mind and body's uh, lack of I like It's like I'm aware of mind and body's uh, lower nature. I'm aware of it. But I'm not at conflict with it. I'm not in conflict with it. I can see it. I have mercy for it. I have mercy for my mind body. Does that make sense? And not in a condescending manner, you know, not putting it down, oh poor you, that mercy that I know that you want to become one with me. And it's okay. Patiently, you are becoming one with me. You don't have to become a perfect body mind. Because you have a fixed nature also. And I understand it. So however you may be, I am, I the being, I the being that I am, am allowing my happiness to naturally penetrate this mind, body, these thoughts and words and feelings and emotions. I'm not trying to make it perfect. Please understand this. When you try to make your mind body perfect, it is Iqbal trying very hard to become perfect. It is this thought. Iqbal is the mind, compilation of thoughts and emotions and memories, right? It is this desire to be perfect actually starts to become an impediment for the mind to merge in the source.
an obstacle for the mind to merge in the source. Yeah? So we never say my mind and body is perfect ever. <laughs> we say, I, the being, I know my perfection is beyond the mind and the body. Because you never know what's around the corner. Something can just come up. You know, it's like a gush of wind can just come up and start moving the blades of the fan. <laughs> Who knows what can come up? <laughs> yeah? So just know that you are that you now. Otherwise, I will, you will constantly look for yourself in the future through a thought, through a feeling in the body. Any questions or comments at this point? One thought. Yeah. Be a very perfect, and uh, that that's impediment like, to merge into the soul. Like I have to be very perfect from my body, from my thought. Yeah, I am being like this, and yeah. that's 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 impediment to merge that parvana into that. Absolutely, it is an impediment. It is yeah, an. I'm saying that you know, uh, thoughts of happiness, like uh, thoughts of happiness, like if something thing is giving the happiness, okay, uh, it's creating in the future thoughts like that. And uh, it is just like, ki, how could I live this? How could I live this? How could I think like this? How yeah. could I feel like this? I shouldn't be feeling like this. I shouldn't be thinking like this. This is not how a Brahmin thinks and feels. No. Yeah. So I am actually giving it more power over me. And but if, if, but, sorry? With experience, if I would say, then I would say ki, how much I was giving the attention that I don't have to do this. Two days, three days, I used to, I, I don't used to do that. But after that, I was completely indulged into that. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, what is going on? I'm doing Amritvela. I'm doing everything, whatever Baba is saying. Even I'm doing that, ki, I'm not going to take all that food so it's going to make you like uh, uh, very much distracted from here and there. Mm -hmm. I'm in the liquid, diet, whatever, whatever. Uh, but the thing is that I'm not getting discontentment completely. with the now is the cause of all suffering true completely true yeah yeah and knowing that and this one this this soul has seen all the time body mind experiences sometimes they're so peaceful and sometimes they are just like ripples and sometimes they can be like storms they come in different variations. The only thing that I, the soul, and Baba, Baba just reminds me one thing. Baba just looks at the soul and says, this experience is exactly what it should be now. Because you are pure, loving presence. That's all. <laughs> there uh, is no suffering. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Did with uh, like by continuously doing this? Is it something like this one is experiencing? Like what you just said. That's what the practice has been. After uh, like those repeated experiences, they uh like seem like the sound of uh, you know foreign sound something which is happening a lot far away where you're not related to it the yeah. diminishing effect we would say that getting lesser and lesser or strength is 
going the off. Tenacity. Yeah, the tenacity of those experiences. But at the same time, there is no problem if they have reoccurrence also. Mm. Yeah? Because you know you are this being who's totally in love with the manifestation of mind and body. Yeah? I love this expression from one of the poets. He says, eternity is in love with productions of time. I just love it. <laughs> Eternity is in love with productions of time. I, the eternal being, I, the being, am in love with whatever the experience of this moment may be. And this experience is made up of time and space and thought. Am I in, and I am in love with whatever appears in front of me. Because that's who I am. I am love. So what one has seen here is mind doesn't go much in the past or the future. Because what I have realized is there is no past in the future space in my mind. It's all coming and arising in front of me and subsiding within me. It's arising within me and subsiding within me. So this concept of past and future is also fading away. Mm. Otherwise, mind earlier used to say, oh, these thoughts are coming from the past. I, the mind doesn't speak this language anymore. Oh, what will happen in the future? The mind doesn't speak this language anymore. But it's more like, oh, it's a thought which is labeled past is arising now. And it's a thought which is labeled future arising now. In front of me, the now. Where is past and future? So then all the stories they don't have because it's not somewhere back there. It's not in the back of my mind. Mind is not in the body somewhere in the back of the body. No, the language in the back of my mind itself is saying that I'm believing myself to be the body. There's no such thing as back of the mind. Hmm. There's only the soul and within which there is a mind and things appear. And things disappear within me. So this space that it had created of past and future, it's fading, 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 fading. So even if the mind speaks the old habituated language, oh, they said this two years ago or whatever it may be. I'm, not, I'm just making up. Yeah, or what will they say if this happens? And what will they say? How will they react? How will they like it or not like it? You know, that future presumption. Immediately you see with Baba and I and Baba together and I see, Baba, what was that? Just a thought. Feels like an object arising within you and subsiding within you. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing else. Is that? Yes, see? that's completely true. Because, you know, we always have a body in our head of future. <laughs> and that's our thought. Yeah, it's just a thought Why? arising in the now. And it will subside when you're seeing it with complete loving drishti that you are. Yes. That's how Baba sees it. So that's how I see it. Yeah. That's why Baba says that it requires courage and wisdom. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that time was that that feels so natural. That feels so like just it's so natural to think if I'm not going to think, who is going to think for me for my future? <laughs> Absolutely. You are so careless. Like yeah. you are so careless. Yeah. And and it's <laughs> like not that. like we don't use our mind to think. We do, but from the space of knowing that even the future planning is done in the now. It's relevant for now. Now, whatever the 
future according to the mind may unfold to be, it may not be what the plan was now. <laughs> yeah? yeah? We don't know how it will unfold. But now I know that this is what is the uh, temporary plan. But we don't know how it will unfold. Whatever it will be, it will be according to the mind. But this is now, it feels relevant and it feels practical. But again, at the same time, you're very open to however it unfolds also. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Even sometimes, even sometimes mind has such a silly things that it will say, if you're not going to think such kind of things, like you're not going to but think- Bring the attention yeah. back to you. Let the attention be relaxed back into you. This is a thought. Relax the attention back into you. This is the doorway through which you relax the attention back into you. And here you see Baba says, Ek himmat ka kadam tum badhao. Hazar kadam main tumko dunga. <laughs> one step of courage and a thousand steps of help from Baba. And that one step of courage is Relax the thought back into you. Rest Baba will take care. Didi, there was a situation recently which helped to understand this timelessness. When I was traveling, my flight was delayed uh, by 24 hours. So at four places, I had to update you know, uh, London, Abu Dhabi, uh, India, and Tokyo. So uh, I was so confused at one point. Uh, and that, that was really helping me to understand that we really are timeless. Like family, uh, everybody was asking what time you'll reach and that. Earlier, I tried to, you know, m make those calculations. It was just fraction of seconds and then I stopped. I just clicked the picture of the boarding pass and uh, sent it to them that you calculate. And with Baba, I was understanding more that whatever time is it at different places, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, it's mm -hmm. such a, like it was helping me to understand timelessness. And time is mind made creation. Yeah. Like, it's doesn't so matter. funny because here at times we have to adjust the clocks. Yeah. <laughs> One hour behind and one hour forward. And I find that concept of time very practical, but very funny also at the same time. And I'm like, what do you mean by turning back the clocks and turning forward the clocks? It's like you're trying to control a concept, mind, mind made and man made concept. It's so, it really is a concept. You can see it in action. <laughs> It was so funny that it's 7 a.m. in London, 3 a.m., whatever. Like, I was All like, the it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. For practical purposes, I understand. But yeah. when you make it a belief, yeah. really, it creates a space of future and a space of past in your mind only. It's not somewhere else. All the spaces in your mind. Yeah. So that's why time and space is inside you. You are not inside time and space. Yeah? And body is made up of time and space. It's inside of you. Okay? Wonderful. Thank you, Baba. Let your mind contemplate these things. But know that you are in the womb of the Supreme Parent. And... In the womb of the Supreme Parent, you know you can observe the time and the space concepts and really use these tools, beautiful tools, use them without making it your belief and that is who you really are, without making it to be that. Yeah, You are not that, but you are the user of these tools of time and space. Yeah? Didi, thank you so much for beautifully using the words because over the time, uh, there's a realization that, okay, I, after coming to Gyan, uh, I have experienced this, realized this, but there was no clear understanding. And like uh, 
your mind also needs that understanding to you know as you say the pointer mind is pointing towards your truth so mm -hmm. that is becoming so clear and uh, like when you explained about dead silence and sweet silence after like the time when i was taking gyan the seven days course which was happening during that time i had experienced it but now it is clear after like five years i could understand what i why what i had experienced five years back so mm -hmm. thank you so much for you know using the words so accurately and so beautifully that you know there's such a clear understanding for us thank you thanks to you thank you baba Thank you, Baba. And now you can see it is her perception. It is this soul's <laughs> perception, right? It is this soul's and scars speaking, right? <laughs> it's got nothing to do with this. It's this soul's and scars speaking. Okay. Thank you, Baba. Om Shanti. <laughs> Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> In the extrovert mind also get inside that. Ki extrovert jo honge, he can't be introvert. But now I can feel that because this part was very extrovert. Now I'm getting so much introvert. Wonderful. You are already. Yeah, yeah I'm already. This is and I can see your mind is also con kind of more interested in you rather than whatever is not out there. There's nothing out there, but it's just more interested in you. Very nice. Yeah. Now I'm completely able to make myself merged in me. My, sorry, that's mind merged in me. It's yeah. now possible. Mm -hmm. Very good. But sometimes in some things uh, which were very much interested to me in the past, uh, it it just draw my attention. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. And it has to come. Let it. It's okay. You see your power. They may feel strong, but they're not powerful. I do feel very, very strong. I can't imagine yeah. that. This I can't is a thought withdraw your attention from. You're not fighting with it. It's just a thought. Lovely thought. Beautiful thought. Just withdraw your attention from it. Towards yourself who doesn't have the language of I can't. I do this. I think uh, I'm telling this number. Like almost thousand times in the Let day. Let it be 5,000 times. How does it matter? You're tireless. It's okay, yeah. right? You're the tireless being and tirelessly you're seeing. All you, the being is really being with Baba. It's just allowing the attention to collapse back into you. There's no doing. There's no doing. Because Baba is there with you, it all happens on its own. Just your interest is so much in yourself and Baba. That's it. Just, okay, 10,000 times. Mind is counting 10,000. The soul, timeless, no count, countless, <laughs> right? Thank you, Baba. Didi, can I ask one last question? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in one classes, like two weeks ago or something, you uh, there was a murli when Baba says, your history is not monkeys. You are not monkeys. I come and tell you that you were not those monkeys. And in the part... Uh, uh, like my son has exams he's in just grade two and he has a history of you know uh about the stone age how human beings and i was like i can't teach you this this is not true and uh like how do we deal with the situations because in textbooks and in educational like he still has to write his exams and like at the age of eight he was blankly looking at me and now she will say something and He's like, no, no, I know that you have something interesting to tell me, uh, something that my teacher hasn't told me. Please tell me what that is. And tell I was see what it is. It's okay to fail the exam. It's fine. <laughs> Maybe the teachers will come to know something that they otherwise wouldn't come to know. <laughs> At least in this part, I have seen, I've been okay with those souls part failing these school exams. I really couldn't care for the worldly studies, yeah? But <laughs> what you find is that somehow life takes care of things. But, but you stick with the truth and you can say there is this perspective of the world, yeah. but this is the true perspective, you know? 
this is one perspective which is believed to be true like we used to believe that the earth that the sun revolves around the earth yeah. right mm -hmm. something very similar this is a belief but you don't have to make it your mm -hmm. your belief the truth is this yeah i explained to him that these are theories and theories means they are not proved so exactly. there is no practical proof to it. So yeah. I told him, I'll tell you something later. Can but you, you know. tell him what is your experience? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take him to his experience rather than theories and beliefs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take him to his personal experience and ask him, what do you feel? Mm -hmm. Do you feel you're a child of God or do you feel you're a child of a monkey? Mm -hmm. Take him to yeah. that. <laughs> Let this experience speak for itself. Yeah. Thank you, Didi. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Om Shanti.